everyone. We are live at 5 at Broadway.com. It is Monday, June 11th. The first time I knew the day instinctively because it's the day after the Tony That's Awards. That's right. I am Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And hey, look who's over there. It's Caitlin Moynihan. Hey. And we have a great guest. Miss Julie James is here. From Sirius Yay! XM. We were on the town last night with Julie James. Yes. It's late place into to be. the morning. <laughs> Yes, it was a long night. Or early into the morning. Sure. Early in the morning, whatever. We have a lot to talk about, but first, today's top five. It's the band's visit world, and we're just living in it. But I love True. her. I'm trying. I'm yeah, trying. get out the broom. There's a band's <laughs> visit sweep at the Tony Awards. They got last their broom night. out. And this just did it. They had 11 nominations. They won 10 awards. Ooh. 10. How what long have I been talking? What percent is that? Ninety-one that's, and a that's half a or something. A thousand percent. <laughs> I wasn't good at math. <laughs> I went. I was good at theater it's stuff. A lot. Uh, yeah. So best musical, the band's visit. Uh, Tony Shalhoub. Tony Shalhoub won. Mm -hmm. Katrina Lank, not Katrunka Lank. Katrunka Lank won. <laughs> if you watch our video of Secrets of the Tony nominees, you will get this joke. Um, like, yeah. Ariel Stachel yes. won. He was just here recently. Yeah. Uh, you know, David Yazbek finally won. He's no. He said he's still a three-time loser, but now he's a winner as well. What a sweetheart. Itamar Moses. I got a great picture of us with David Yazbek. You, oh, you got it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah we see. got it's pictures. Check with our people. social media. You're so, we we you're are so kind fancy. of obsessed with David Yazbek. We have been I feel like time. we've been obsessed with David Yazbek Since forever. Since the Fulmonte. So, anyway, yeah. we're very happy We're very for happy for him. Very well deserved. But also, I want to mention that Harry Potter won six awards. Angels in America won three, including Best Revival. Great stuff. I mean, Lindsay Mendez, our vlogger. Once, once on this island. Yeah, we're very, very excited for Once on this Island, which yeah. was our number one show last year, Broadway.com's yeah. pick. So there's well, a lot of Tony coverage. You can go to Broadway.com and look at pictures and videos. And, and we're going to talk a lot more about the Tonage with Miss Julie James. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And guys, a new leader is joining the band. Yes, so uh, <laughs> Sasson Gabay. Gabay. Sasson Gabay. Yep. Say Sasson it every Gabay? which way, and one of them will Caitlin be right. taught me how to say it right before <laughs> Sasson Gabay. <laughs> Uh, who was actually at the band's visit at Tony party last night. He was. I got to see him. Yes. Um, seems like a really nice guy. He is going in as Tupac. You know, so he played the role in the film, mm -hmm. the, the 2007, 2007 film, film. Mm -hmm. and he will now be making his Broadway debut. I, this is so fascinating. I wonder how long this has been in the works, you know, that, yeah, he, that's a good that he would do this. Um, so uh, obviously Tony Shalhoub won the Tony for the role, and uh, Darius Kshani has been playing it because right. because uh, Tony Shalhoub left to go do The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, one of my favorite TV shows. Um, <laughs> so starting June 26, Sasson Goodbye will be taking over, and you I just like to do this. I just, you know I just like to be very <laughs> like specific. The hand about movements it. good, it's good. interesting because um, it's not much of a singing role. No. So yeah. you know, and it's interesting yeah. that that you know. That uh, Tony Shalhoub won the Tony for yep. mu a musical performance, but there's not much for singing, so uh, it's perfect for uh, Sasson Goodbye to go into it. So we're excited to see him June 26th. It sounds like we're dubbing in you saying it, but you're actually <laughs> sitting here saying it. I just want to say it right. You're doing a great job. I appreciate it. A plus. That. A plus. <laughs> I know that the season just officially ended yesterday with the Tonys, but we already have a new show alert. We have a new show alert. Alert, alert. alert. Well, this news came out last This week. news we're came out before, up. but we, we weren't around. So we're going to yeah. catch you up. So Stephen Pasquale and Kerry Washington will be back on the Broadway in a new play. It's called American Sun. It's by Christopher Demos Brown. I, Demos Brown, perhaps. Mm -hmm. A um, new writer. A new writer. Mm -hmm. And it is directed by Tony winner Kenny Leon. And uh, Kerry Washington has been on Broadway. She was in the David Mamet play Race. In 2009. Before she blew up. Before she blew up in Scandal. Blew up on Scandal, yeah. And Stephen Pasquale is a regular. Yes. And we're grateful for that. Um, so anyway, previews began on October 8th, opens on November 4th at the Booth Theater. Exciting. What's it about? Oh. They're, they're like a couple. They're like a married yeah. Let me read it wife, to you right? because <laughs> I don't know what it's about. I'm going to read it for the very first time. It's going to be exciting. Oh, great. A mother who is in search of her missing teenage son and how her husband causes the evening to spiral out of control. I think it takes place at a police station. Yes. I think I read that. I think it's like... It's you know what? These two are going to be great together. Oh, so I'm, I'm really excited. excited. I think this I'm is, this really is excited. very, very exciting. And I'm always excited for a new playwright to have a new voice on mm -hmm. Broadway. So that's great. Yeah. For sure. And a highly anticipated revival has officially found its home. That's yeah. Exciting. So, uh, Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kate. Another opening. Kiss Me, Kate. Kelly O'Hara looked gorgeous last night. Yes, of course. And, of course, she's gearing up for... Um, her next Tony nomination next year. 
That's she's basically what's happening. Court. First she's going to go uh, to the King and I in she London. She will be at the Tonys next year. Uh, she is playing Lily Vanessi slash Catherine in Kiss Me Kate, which we knew about before. Mm -hmm. There's a roundabout yes. production. It started with that concert. They did like a benefit That's concert right. of it, right? Um, so it'll be at Studio 54. And it'll start on Valentine's Day next year, February 4th. That's February 14th, in case you didn't know. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you never know. That's also my anniversary at Broadway.com. I knew that. Which too. you knew. Yes. Uh, and opening night is March 14th. Uh, and it's going to be a limited run through June 2nd. But wink, wink, we'll see. Um, you never know. I love the wink, wink with an Come actual on. wink, Kiss wink. Me <laughs> with a wink, wink. Kelly O'Hara starring in Kiss Me Kate. That's a big deal. Now, who's going to be her Fred? Slash. I don't know. Pachokio, okay. I don't know. It's, it's, no, they're all playing the double. Slash, the show slash. is in a show. Anyway, we we're very know. excited. We don't so know that's, yet. look, there's all these things. Uh, it's all about next season. Mm -hmm. We're moving on. We're moving on. After we talk to Julie James. <laughs> After we talk producers. to Julie James. <laughs> but Sarah Brellis and Josh Groban did, were able to drive up viewership for last night. Right. We're not moving on. We're so, not moving on yet. <laughs> the Tonys. <laughs> we're still kind of obsessed, and we're still obviously very slap happy about it. Um, Obviously, Josh Groban and Sarah Bareilles did a great job. They did yeah. a great job. They did. And you, uh, and you concur. And uh, there's a 2.1% increase in viewership, so the ratings went up. They were bumped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, 6.05 million viewers tuned in. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, you know what? The, every year when the ratings come in, it's always like we're always like ready to be depressed. It's always like it went down, it and went it's like, down. And it's like steady And this year now. it went up. It's steady. So it went bit. up. That's uh, lifting my voice. A little. It went up <laughs> a little. <laughs> and there was no big sports event that it was up against this year. Right. But great. I'm happy. The Tonys are where they should be. Exactly. Okay, Beth, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. Do you, you think Julie James is ready to come on camera? I, I don't see her know. fixing she seems, her hair. She's judging at she the looks moment. She's fabulous. She's, always. 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 Uh, okay, thank you, Beth. Bye. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell us a little bit more about Julie James? Of course. Guys, today we have Julie in the studio. She is currently the program director and curator for Sirius XM's radio's On Broadway show, is the host of Broadway Names with Julie James, and she's a co-host for Broadway Across America's Monthly Report. She's an avid fan of the theater and has been involved in the community for over 10 years. Be sure to follow her on Twitter at Julie underscore James and leave your questions for her in the comments below. Everyone, welcome Paul and Julie. Hi, Julie James. Wait a minute. It's I, Tony I, Monday. Who has, okay, you <laughs> this know is a so new funny? tradition. You know what's funny you said that? Because Tony Tuesday to me is the day that the nominations come out. Tony Wednesday is that day that we have to sit in the hotel and interview everybody. The press everybody. day, yeah. And then Tony Sunday yes. is Tony Sunday. Now it's Tony Monday. There's, we, need a, we need a Tony... Um, Thursday event. We need to plan. <laughs> Next year, we need we need more Thursday. events. That's definitely what we need. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Julie hasn't had much sleep. Well, that's what that's that was that's what she was indicating. Sleep is for suckers. <laughs> <laughs> For people who don't like the Tonys or Broadway, because we uh, we love the Tonys. We uh, we love having you here every day after the Tonys because I do spend um, Tony night with you a little bit. Yeah. We, we hit the town. It's a fun night. It's a fun night in New York. It's a fun let's, night. Let's actually sort of run people through what your night is. Oh, cool. Well, the night actually begins at eight a.m. Because I go to uh, Radio City for the dress rehearsal. Yeah. And Which I've never done. Yeah. It's an exciting thing. I could really use the time back, but to be honest, it informs the entire rest of my day. Yeah. Because that's when I take copious notes. I, I make note of the run of show, of all of the numbers that are going to be performed, and yeah. anything else that I think is, is relevant, and it helps me shape the rest of the, uh, yes. the, rest of the day. And, and Caitlin Gallup, who does our social media, she went and did the same yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. So we actually got a great rundown. So we it's really helpful. We, we, we were able to know sort of when things were going to happen. Yeah, it's really helpful because um, at the core of what we do on Sirius XM is a live play-by-play -play broadcast. I kind of treat it as if it's the Super Bowl or your favorite, you know, sports game, and you're stuck in the car and you don't know what's going on. And mm -hmm. so we're, you know, kind of giving you all of the of the dish. So when I know what the bits are, you know, because a lot of times when we're on air, it's on mute and we're just looking at the screen. And so knowing what the bits are and knowing what's happening now and which award it is is really helpful but before all of that and this was new for me this year mm -hmm. um, 
I I always have done the red carpet, which yep. is an adventure. Yeah. I know it looks very glamorous, but it's actually the hardest thing that stressful. you can do uh, with a, any out of all of the things that I do all year. That's the hardest. And um, but this year I have a new system back at Sirius XM that allowed me to send things basically in real time back wow. to the studio. So we really were live on the red carpet cool. instead of, you know, I would say there in the past was maybe an hour's turnaround time, you know, it was yeah. still quick, but like to be able to break into the channel and be like, here we are live on the red carpet with Lindsay Menzies or, um, you know, any number of, of celebrities and, yeah. and performers was, was pretty cool. So that yeah. was new and I was nervous about it because I'm like, is it going to work? There's the whole technical yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. We lost Wi-Fi, so there was like There's a time or two where like things weren't going through, and I was nervous about it. But it all ended up great. So you do the red carpet, then I race back to the studio. Uh, was in there with Christine Petty on air, um, doing the whole play-by-play -play thing. Then I need to go back to my desk when that um, when that is over and program the next day's music because oh, like what you're listening to right now yeah like what's on air yeah. right now if any <laughs> because I don't like to program it without the results yeah and so I wait for the show to come down then blah, 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 like try to furiously program all that music so I was leaving the studio at about 1 uh -huh. Um so by that time why it ends up being a long night is because I don't even start celebrating until yes. 1 30 and I don't know about you Paul but like you know, I'm so exhausted and it would be so easy to just, you know, hang up the heels and call it a night. But that it's a big reward center yeah. for all of the hard work that we've put in over the year and celebrating with people that night, you know, at the parties carrying around their yeah, Tonys is a pretty special experience. And like even seeing Rachel Bay Jones last night in the wee hours, you know, I have this great picture of her with her Tony last year. So it's like, you know, it's like, oh, here we are. You know, last year yeah, you were holding the Tony, and and now um, and now you're here. So it's um, it it's it's just fun to celebrate, and I can't stop myself. <laughs> <laughs> it is special. I actually I don't always hit a lot of the parties, but this year I I ran to uh, the ones on this island party. You did. Very you didn't I tell snuck me in that. there. I snuck in Woo! there. Uh, very excited for Once in This Island. Oh, I mean, it was, it was just a joyful room. That's so Kyle, great. but Kyle behind the camera was there uh, enjoying a frozen margarita, I believe. <laughs> um, so that, that was fun. And then, um, then we went down to the band's visit party, which yeah. is at Bryant Park Grill, obviously. Um, and I also want to say thank you to the producers of the band's visit who invited like my entire team oh, that's to the so party, great. which was wonderful. So thank you that's for that. That's great. I really appreciate that. Um, and then I went to the Cafe, Cafe Carlisle. I mean, not Cafe Carlisle, the Carlisle the Hotel. Carlisle, yes. Basically the entire hotel. Rick Miramontes, uh, famed Broadway publicist. Indeed. Throws the party of the year. And yep. so um, that's sort of the one that goes until, what time does it go until, Julie? Well. 5.30, 5.45? We, we were definitely getting kicked out. Um <laughs> At, I want to say, around 5.30. It was 5, yeah. Um, I think I, they actually got us on around 5.50. And that's early because I have, on several occasions, watched the sun come up from yeah, the Yeah, I thought it went to 7 or 8. Yeah, so. no, it used to. So I guess, you know, woo, get out. <laughs> you know, but everybody was there. Everybody was it there. It was crazy. Uh, I mean, I, I remember at the last moments, Andrew Garfield was was there. Uh, Ariel Satchel was there. Who else yep, did I see? I there? saw Sarah Bareilles. Lindsay Mendez. As, soon as I, think, I walked escaped in, escaped a few minutes before the end. It, but people were really having having a great yeah. a great time. So, how do you feel about the winners? And it's, by the way, you guys, if you have any questions for us about any of this, please write them in the comments. And yeah. Caitlin's already getting some, but we'll, we'll get to your questions. But yeah, I, just I wanna, would love to hear what, what you, people want to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. what do you think about the winners? What a big night for Bands Visit. It was a big night, and I think the, the big moment for me, and I don't know how you were feeling in the winner's room, but we were in the studio, and when er, relatively early in the night. Mm -hmm. There was a twist. There was a turn. There was a turn. There was a turn moment. And it was... Well, we get really comfortable with our predictions. Yeah, yeah. And actually, you know, we did predictions here at the site and and I was having these weird moments watching the show where there were so many categories where right when they announced the nominees I had the correct I suddenly was like no 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 wait it's going to be that it's going to be ah. that and I was predicting them correct in the final moment yeah. like Laurie Metcalf was the first one where I went Laurie Metcalf's going to win yeah I know Laurie Metcalf and then she won and then but that was not your prediction no originally no we thought Denise Goff might, might have had the edge I there. had that with Lindsay right before they called Lindsay Mendez I'm like Lindsay's going to win 
and I knew Lindsay was gonna win. I, I I had my a very strong feeling, but you know, I, know. I it's they're tough. It's just like a tough cat. Well, and also like that dispels the whole like they're gonna cancel each other out because she had Renee Fleming in her category. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of times people say, oh, when there's two people from the same show, right. you know, they're gonna cancel each other. So right. the but that. Did so what not was the hold turning true. moment for you? The turn was when Itamar Moses yes. won Best Book <gasps> because of a Musical. Because Tina Fey and and when that did not go to Tina Fey. So Tina Fey. And interestingly, they did that category on the air. Yeah. Typically, best book, like David Yazbek's Tony was done off the air. Which, I'm sorry, that seems but crazy But this is what they do. Me. They usually do the creatives off the air. Yeah. But they did it on the air. Because, because they thought it was going to be Tina. thought Tina Fey was winning yes. Tony. And yes. they, they weren't going to, you know, lose that moment. But instead, it went to Inamar Moses. But again, that was one of those things where I went, of course it did. Of course it did because, and here's the thing with the band's visit. I think we get a little um, complicit, isn't that the hot word? With <laughs> with like things that open, the band's visit is a l so beloved oh, show. Yeah. And it got really tricky with the awards because when something opens off Broadway first, it's in the awards, a lot of the award races the year before. Mm -hmm. So we're not hearing about it a lot. That's true. And so, but if you really think about it, that show, it's a small, and, and it's not a big blockbuster show. But if you look at the other shows it was up against, they don't have, they, none of them had that same energy. It's true. None of them, and if you really like think about it, it makes, and it makes sense that Inamar Moses uh, would have won that. I, I don't know. It's, 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 well, it, was, it, it, was, it was sort of a good lesson for me to really think lot. And the same thing with Once in this Island. Yeah. And I, look, I've been saying Once in this Island. Oh. We've had many conversations about <laughs> this over the year. Favorite. But there's, but my Fair Lady and Carousel are both very solid, well loved right. productions, but. They also, none of them really, at the end of the day, had the energy. Once in this island, everybody who, how many people have you talked to who have seen Once in this island who had like this revelatory mm -hmm. emotional reaction to it? Yeah, and I think to further your point, both of those shows opened last yep. year. It's a fall versus so spring thing. So it's a fall thing. versus spring thing. And I think so often what we fall into is that because we're inundated with the spring season and 20 some shows are opening yeah. in a month's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They become the like most recent memory that yeah, you, you, take, you know, you take that's, them for granted a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and they're the fresh they're fresher in voters' minds a lot of the time and they're fresher in all of our minds. And so um, they have the hardest job opening in the fall because they have to sustain yes. over the long winter months, which is a real accomplishment. Um, the band's visit had that energy that you're talking about from the get go. And not that I didn't really enjoy the show, but I just thought, but wait, like it's so early. We, yeah, we haven't even right. seen what else is to come yet. So I was reserving judgment a little bit of like, let's not get, because mm -hmm. people were saying even back then it was going to yep. take everything. Everyone was saying Everyone it would was win. saying Katrina was going to take it. Everyone yep. was going to say. And so I, I, I was like, well, okay, but we haven't even seen what's going to happen yet. Yeah. So I was reserving a little bit of room for what may uh -huh. be yet to come, but... You know what else they interesting that I thought about? Um, talk about Tony campaigns. Campaigning is an interesting thing. Mm -hmm. And you talk about certain publicists who do certain things. And I, sometimes people give credit to a publicist, uh, and I think it's undeserved credit. Mm -hmm. But something interesting happened with Polk & Polk Co. is the press office for mm -hmm. the band's visit. And I don't know if you had this experience, but when the band's visit opened in the fall, I we we tried to set up so many different interviews with people and they and they w wouldn't set them up. Hmm. The, we had a really hard time doing. This is like a very behind the scenes kind of thing. But you know, the show opened what November, October, November. Yeah, and it got great reviews. November, and I'm sure they knew. Well, this show is going to sell great for four or five months just based on the steam of that. Right? We kind of knew that. And 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 I had a hard time setting up stuff to promote the band's visit and it was very frustrating in the beginning i was like why can't we do this you think they were playing the long game Is yes that what you're because suggesting? all of a sudden in like february they were like hey do you want to do david yasbeck on show people what do you want to do with katrina lang and all of a sudden we started doing all these things hmm. in march and april and suddenly we had more access and i don't know how i don't know if polk and co if my, my friends over at polk and co i don't know if this was really Designed. how crafted it was but i think it was kind of smart mm. I think because otherwise, we would have done a lot of press about it yeah, early on. Early, that everyone would have forgotten about yeah. by the time these spring shows came along. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so a, anyway, good, that's a good, interesting point. Campaigning is a really interesting uh -huh. part of what we do that I think a lot of you guys watching might not right. kind of know about. Yeah, yeah. But it's a real thing. And it's kind of as much how you play the game as, you know, because look, at the end of the day, 
aren't all of these shows very deserving in one of way, course. shape, or form? So yeah. it does kind of sometimes come down to you, th you're all great. So what's going to be the differentiator? And sometimes that is like how they plan those things mm -hmm. and how they how they play the game. Now the danger of having Julie James on live at five is that we it could be a two hour episode <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because we just Cause talk now. Caitlin is over here with, with an iPad, and uh, and we will go a little long on this. Um, and I mean, Kyle's over Monday. there. Kyle's it's looking for Monday. a frozen margarita. Um, <laughs> when else? When, when better? But let's. What are there any questions or comments yes. or oh, we got critiques? Are we lit up? We got. Are we <laughs> lit? <laughs> Well, let's start taking Oh my them. gosh. Okay. So Lisa wants to know if there was anything that was left out of the dress rehearsal that was a surprise that for you who attended the dress rehearsal. Oh, live. cool question. That yeah. is cool. Let's see. I mean, other than the fact Well, not that all the celebrities are there. Not all the celebrities show up to do like the presenting. De Niro wasn't there to say De Niro F, F whoever. Did not, that, that didn't happen. That did not happen in <laughs> rehearsal. <laughs> Okay, you I just say when me. that happened in the press room, I'm watching him on a TV backstage. And Kyle was there and Beth Beth Stevens was there. And I was just like <laughs> And then I was like and it was literally a moment where I was like, did that really happen? And then he said it again. <laughs> and then everyone at did home was like, really what did he say? What did people in the office? Yeah, we were like, people in the office were like, what did he say? What did he say? Because it was just totally you know, totally bleeped. Mm -hmm. Um anyway, so anything else from the rehearsal? I'm trying to think. Let's see. Was the goat there? The goat was there. Um, I saw the goat on the red carpet for a moment. Yeah, Ken the goat was... pooped on the red carpet. I, I, I saw photos. Oh, nice. Ken Davenport, by Ken the way. Ken Davenport Congratulations, the... producer of Once in yes, a Island. Big I moment for him. I had to seek him out at the Carlisle to yeah, congratulate him. Yeah, I was very, very happy for him. But uh, he carried, the, he walked yeah, the goat. He yeah. ran it down the carpet. Yeah. It was like kind of running. <laughs> um, <laughs> also, do you guys know that the, the goat has its own Instagram Yes. Goats on this island. I do. At I do. Goats on this island. Yep. Check it out. I live. Yes. Um, I don't really think that there was anything major left out of the rehearsal is the short answer, except pretty, for this De Niro well, business. I mean, it's a well-oiled Yeah, it's a well-oiled because this is the only time that they, the, my guest turned to me and was like, oh, I didn't know they were really all in like full costume and like it's a full, and yes, it is the only time that, that the show the gets thing. rehearsed from start to finish in its entirety because leading up to that, the rehearsals during the week are just numbers. So like Mean Girls will come in for their two hour call and work their number for those two hours and then they're, and then right. they're done. So this is the only time that the whole show gets put together. So it's, it's pretty much the way it's going to be. Awesome. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Uh, David wants to know what the audience reaction was like for Springsteen when he performed. In the rehearsal, because uh, again, I was on the air uh, during the mm -hmm. actual show, but in the rehearsal, it was markedly exciting to the point where when he got a standing ovation after his number, not that I didn't love it, mm -hmm. I thought it was really, really well done. But um, I was kind of like, really? Like, we didn't stand for any of the, for most of the other, like, Broadway performances, but you're standing. And way up, you could hear, like, all the way up into the rafters of, of Radio City. It was like, Bruce! Like, we were getting, you know, the typical, like, Bruce! I you know, think, thing. you know what I think it is? <laughs> I think it's, you know, theater people were kind of, you know, the outcasts, gloriously. You know, we grow up kind of liking right. something. And when like a rock star says that we're okay, right. I feel like it brings out all of our inner like oh, Bruce Springsteen likes. Are we cool? And that's you know that, and, <laughs> right exactly. And I think that's kind of like why that all that happens. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, it was an interesting time to have him in, involved in the Tonys. And look, you know, those producers are no dummies. They knew that by having him on twice. Having Billy Joel, yeah. and, you know, bring him out, and he did his Tony Honor speech, and then we got him again, very uh, calculatingly at the end of the show. So yeah. we encouraged people to continue to tune in all the way to the end of the telecast. It was maybe smartly he'll play, done. Maybe he can play Tufik and um, <laughs> actually, <laughs> when, when in the band's visit, actually when she uh, introduced it uh, on the Tonys, I thought Bernadette Peters can replace Katrina Lank. Can you imagine? Just picture it. It's fun to picture it. <laughs> Just picture it. Oh. It's fun. She has the hair. Wowzy. Wowzy. So while, while we picture that, let's go to another question. Uh, a lot of people want to know what you think the biggest upset was of the night. Definitely book for me. Sure. 
But I mean, that was a shocker. You're <laughs> to Paul's earlier point. You're absolutely right. They put that on camera. I always am bothered by the fact that best score is not on camera. Yeah, um, I know. I th that is that is the musical, people. Mm -hmm. The score is the musical. Without one, you have a play. Now, I don't know which piece <laughs> of his speech they ended up playing, but he made a joke. David Yazbek, when he won, he got up there and he said. You know, I, I guess I guess I, I somebody said to me I can't say on my website anymore three time Tony loser and he's like but I still can <laughs> yeah. I still lost three times um, David Yazbek <laughs> is gonna do what he wants that's the bottom I line right that, there he's and by the wonderful. way Tootsie Tootsie's, Tootsie's coming, coming. Out. so that might be his next Tony it could be now he's gonna be on a roll Tony Tootsie <laughs> Tootsie Tony <laughs> yes. Yeah. Slap happiness um, so, but and I would say the only other thing was just. Um, once on this island, such a joyful surprise there, yeah. only because, as we were saying, the later opening Carousel and My Fair Lady and being so classic really picked up some some heat towards yeah. the end of the season. Um, was afraid that maybe Once on this Island was going to be left behind again in the memory and not because of their deservedness. So that was, I, I don't know if you'd call that an upset. Um, and the other upset was that Michael Arden did not get to Well, I was just about to speak. say that also um, David Cromer won for Direction of Musical for the band's visit over much, uh, you might say, splashier choices. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. Michael Arden, who did Once on this Island, and, and which is, you know, they clearly like Once on this Island. So That's that right. could have been a surprise. Yeah. He, that could have been a surprise. Win. Our own Seth and Rudetsky gets really animated about directors of revivals versus original productions. Uh, he really feels that directing a revival is a different exercise mm -hmm. it is. Than, uh, than directing an original piece. and that. But uh, talking about original pieces, uh, Tina Landau. He, I mean, yeah. SpongeBob SquarePants. A I mean, this really thought, was, if there was ever going to be a tie in a category. Has that happened? Direction, yes. But for not, directors? But not for direct maybe not for directors, okay. but it should have. This this is a year this when like been. a three year tie would have been celebrated. <laughs> I mean I mean I mean I loved all of them. And How I mean you I and, you know and Bart Cher too. I mean there's a lot it was Bart a great Cher. it was a Casey very Nicola. rich it might have been the richest category. I, I think I mean you, it was, I think it was you pretty may be right, amazing. other than nominating seven actresses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Caitlin? Oh, gosh. Yeah, let's do one more question. Uh, we're getting a lot of... Are you saying that we have to end soon? Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of people are wondering how you guys think that the... How do I word this? Uh, lack of awards will affect some shows' runs. Ah. So, you know, it's funny. As somebody, oh, One of my friends texted me this morning and said, how'd it go? And I said, it went great. And he said, do you think anything will close? And I said, No. I'm it's, not. I'm not seeing anything right now. It's a really healthy yeah year on Broadway. Normally, after the Tonys, we are announcing closings. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the kind of thing where look, Mean Girls walked away with zero. Wait, and that's a record, by the way. Twelve nominations, zero wins Resulting is in a zero? record. Wow, that's a record. Wow. Yeah. But like the other day when I was doing the Broadway Buzz, which is the little news minute yeah. that I that I do, uh, and I like to do a lot of anniversaries of openings and birthdays and things like that. And it was uh, the other, like, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, it was the opening of Cabaret's original hmm. production, and it had like 11 and one zero. Really? Yeah. Cabaret. And it's Cabaret. People. Wow. Um, so, but that's the thing is that it's so interesting, right? Because... There are years where when a show doesn't win anything, you can expect today yeah. to be like Monday, bloody Monday, yeah. and there's a closing announcement, but we have a really healthy season. Mean Girls is doing a boffo business at the box office, and so they have nothing to, they don't need the Tonys to I mean, SpongeBob them. is not doing as well as I wish it was doing. Yeah, I mean, true. I think SpongeBob, it's sort of, it's, it's going along. But it's here's okay. where the Tonys matter. Yeah. They sold a lot of tickets last night, I bet. Yeah, I'm sure because, they did. Because uh, I think it's interesting what comes across on camera because it's a different mm -hmm. experience than what we see in the theater. Yeah. And uh, that's the kind of show-stopping number. I think they really showed America what the show Gavin Lee, is. Gavin Lee, who I thought would, would win. I thought he was a real contender yeah, as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, num shows like Frozen came across super great yeah. on camera. Um, I think SpongeBob. I think Casey Levy. Shout out for Casey Levy. Shout <laughs> out, girl. Both of the ladies were stunning. I know. I, w I was gonna sing her the the cold doesn't bother. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Not doing it. But I adore you. And she did that. I missed her at the Carlisle party. She did that party. at did nine o'clock in the morning. Oh, and I know. did her show for a matinee. 
and did it that night and killed it. But did you see Rezzies. her at the Carlisle party? I did. I missed her. I want to give her a hug. I'm yeah. giving you a virtual hug, Casey Levy. Hugs. Hugs, Hugs. to all the people we yeah. missed. I, I didn't. Know. You can't see everyone. It's hard, it's actually. Maddening. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, 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 it's a maddening. lot of people and a lot of rooms. And anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there anything else we we need to talk about? I, but uh, but shows. Yes, yeah, struggling shows. No. It's it's no. It's wild. I'm not, I'm it's not one seeing of those, that. And that could be a that would be a different answer in a different year. Well, and all the other plays are closed, other than Harry yeah. Potter, which right. helps. <laughs> and and a lot of them have end dates. Angels or in America like is closing. It doesn't have to. Retail clearly. women. Limited. Retail women is closing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of things are sort of limited. They're are, are limited. limited. And Carousel and My Fair Lady are going to do great. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So yeah. no, no, are it's, a, people, it's good. Are there people, Paul, that you either didn't get to as not as nominees, maybe, or um, or that you're interested in having back to reflect on being a winner? To interview? Winner. Yeah. That's a good question. Let me think about that. I mean, I, there's always people I want to interview. Well, but sure, I, but I mean, you know, you, we here's my thing. We've spent a lot of time yeah. talking with almost all nominees. of these nominees. Yeah, it's and a lot so of energy put when into. You, when you now at the when we're at this point, it's like now what do we talk about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we take. I think we try to take a little break. I mean, we're not yeah. going anywhere, but I think we just take it down a right. notch. Well, head over heels is like any minute. Head Over Heels is starting yeah. any minute. Uh, I think today was the first day of rehearsals for getting the band back together. Oh, my. According to my social media feed. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it just keeps going. Yeah, it doesn't. It's There's no sleep till Christmas or <laughs> Broadway Christmas <laughs> next year. I'm already thinking about what's going to contend next year. Well, we already said it. Kelly O'Hara. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's make our lists. Let's <laughs> make our lists. <laughs> That's all we do all year. All year we're making lists of Punching. who might win Tony's. Checking and them then off. sometimes we're wrong. <laughs> But it's always fun, uh, and it's always... It's I an mean, adventure, man. It is a ride. It is. it is a wild, wild ride. Do you feel good now? I, f- I feel... I feel I good. I feel good. Yeah, I feel good. I, m- I need some sleep. I need some I sleep. Good. I feel good. How do you feel, Caitlin? I feel great. Or a margarita. <laughs> this is Caitlin's first year Yay, working it's my first Tony. Tony. Yeah. First Tony season. First Tony. I survived. Well, wait. Get, tell everyone briefly yeah. what Tony Knight is like here in the office. Because oh, you and I yeah. saw you at the band. You were at the band's visit yeah, party. Yeah, so but what, What's the office? Here we kind of call it like the war room. Yeah. And, but I mean, I was talking to Julie about this that the Broadway.com team is hands down the best, most well oiled machine. Like everyone is just so collaborative here. Like the moments, like, oh, I missed that. It's like, don't worry, I got it. Like we had a, like, a feed going, we had a delay. Like it was chaos, but it was pure, like it was planned chaos. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. It was awesome. And then afterwards, we all got to go party. Like we hit <laughs> up uh, the band's visit party and it was awesome. So it's great. Yeah. Being part of the Broadway community first year down. Can't wait for all the years to come. Oh, yeah. We love having you here. Yeah. And the, yeah. And the whole team like worked their butts off and I just got to go be backstage with Beth and talk to winners. But um, yeah, it was it was awesome. So yeah. we hope that you guys had a great Tony hope night. Hope you had a great Tony's. Yeah. And Julie, thank you for being here. Thank as you for always. having me. You, you year pensy. three. Yes, year three. She, year she's three. become our Tony Monday. <laughs> Tradition. <laughs> Tradition. I'll just book you for next year now. Yeah, I'm available. Okay. <laughs> Have your people call my non-people. And wait, you, so you're Julie underscore. Who's Julie James no underscore? Who's she? You really want to get into this? No. <laughs> We'll do it later. That, wait, really no. quick though. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> there's a Julie James that when I first like went on Twitter, I was yeah. like, oh, the Julie James is taken. I don't think Instagram even existed then. Right. And um, she had like never tweeted anything oh, and didn't have a picture, you yeah. know, all of that. And then I heard from a friend that there's a certain amount of time that if an account is totally undormant, oh. that you can apply to basically ask Twitter to change it. So I was okay. like, ha ha. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, that's what I'm going to do because she's never tweeted. And then like I went to like check and no, it was she, like, the last minute. Burr, I'm cold. <laughs> Wait, she just uh, randomly. T- <laughs> yeah, just like one time. <laughs> one time. I was like. Somebody her, tipped her off. And then I was like, great, now i got to wait another four years to ask Twitter to boot Is she still out there, this girl? I don't I'm know now. I, I think I gave up. But on Twitter and Instagram, Julie underscore James, I love hearing from you. So um, you, know. you know what you should have written back when she wrote, Burr, I'm cold? The cold never bothered <laughs> me <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, Julie. 
You are oh. fun. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to end this. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take we us out? You. Yes. All right, guys. We are live at 5 on Facebook every day at 5 p.m. We'll have the podcast version of today's episode up right after this for you guys to relive all the joy that was this <laughs> past half hour, honestly. Um, and make sure to tune in tomorrow when we have Connor Ryan from Off-Broadway's Desperate Measure.